So hello and welcome to my garage, which is a separate space from my workshop. So this is where I do a lot of my ski servicing and it's a little bit easier for me to kind of get the skis loaded into the car rather than having to take them out of my house and outside and then into the roof box. So this video is all about skis, bindings, skins, and I'm also gonna talk about the poles that I use as well. So a lot of people have requested this video. I did actually do a video like this a few years ago, but back when I was sponsored by Solomon and all the skis were Solomon. And this year it's a little bit different. I've got a few different things. So we're gonna talk about what I like, what I maybe don't like as much, and kind of where I would go from here if I were to get more skis. Oh, can you hear that? The cat wanted to come in. Quite likes being part of the videos these days, I think. There he is. Say hello to everybody. So, let's dive in. So, a little caveat with this video is I'm not sponsored by any ski brand. I am sponsored by ATK for bindings. Not all the bindings that I have are from ATK. I do have some other bindings. We're gonna talk about those later in the video. I don't have a skin sponsor and I don't have a pole sponsor. So everything else is basically stuff that I've bought or acquired or I've had from previous sponsorships. So let's start with the skis that I'm using and let's start with the biggest ski that I have at the moment, which is this, which is the Blizzard Rustler 11 in a 186. Now this is 114 millimeters underfoot and it's got kind of a, not a full metal sheet, but there's metal reinforcement on this ski. And on this ski, I put the cast binding and this is the Free Tour 2.0. This is the new binding from Cast and it really, for me, is the best hybrid binding that's out on the market. So a hybrid binding is basically a, bi a binding that is a downhill binding, but you can also tour with it. Other examples of that are the Shift binding, the Duke PT. I'm sure there's a few other ones out there as well. But yeah, for me, this is the best hybrid binding because it's basically a super solid downhill binding. So the way that these work is you basically slide off the toe piece like that, and then you have a separate low-tech toe piece that slots on there and you can use it for touring. I find this system is super solid and easy to use. The brake latch that holds the brake down is probably the only part of it that isn't super awesome. Some people find that if you touch the brakes together that the brakes can then ping back down again and then you have to kind of go through the process of locking them down, which you can do without coming off the ski. But yeah, that's the only thing that maybe is slightly difficult with these skis. What I would say is that the 186 does feel a little bit short sometimes, especially when I'm wanting to kind of really go for it fast. And you can see there that against my height, it's only a little bit taller than me. Uh, and I do find sometimes that that just holds me back from really kind of getting bigger, more stable turns in with these skis, but these are really good fun in the trees. I was kind of reluctant to go for a 190 something, I can't remember what they do in this ski, but actually maybe retrospectively, I might have gone with that 190 and just kind of sucked up that extra little bit of length. And that's bearing in mind that I have other skis that are shorter, so yeah. So basically on all the new skis that I have this year, I have Pomica Free Tour skins and that's the for me the lightest best skin to be using for free touring free mountaineering that kind of stuff because yeah it's really giving you good glide it's nice and light and small pack size so basically yeah pomica skins all around oh the other benefit with the pomica skins is i don't feel like you need to use a cheat sheet which for me cuts out a huge amount of faff in the mountains so if you're pretty sick of those cheat sheets you could definitely have a look at pomica because the glue is super stable it doesn't kind of migrate across if you stick the two sheets together and then pull it apart it's not like glooping up on one side or the other the next ski down from that is this which is the stance 102 and this is kind of like my charging round resort ski when it's maybe a little bit chopped up you know those days where you're skiing and everything gets tracked within half an hour but you're just skiing downhill and you want something that's going to cut through the crud 
this is really good fun. I don't get to ski it that much because I'm doing a lot of guiding. And for me, having a pure downhill binding for guiding just doesn't really work because a lot of the time I'm going up onto the glacier or I might end up changing the plan and going for a ski tour to try and find fresh snow. So having a downhill binding like this means that you're pretty limited with what you can do. But I do really enjoy these skis. They kind of remind me of my all time favorite ski from maybe nine years ago when I was skiing on the Blizzard Coaches, which was the old version that had two sheets of metal in. This kind of reminds me a little bit of that. Super stable, really damp, nice and heavy for cu cutting through crud and stuff like that. Don't get to ski these as much as I'd like to. I also have a set of the Stance 90, which I quite like when it's like really chopped up or if I'm going out for a peace cruise with some friends or my wife or something. Again, nice solid downhill binding. Don't use these that much as well, unfortunately but I do really enjoy skiing these. Nothing to do with touring, obviously. Downhill binding again. So moving on to the touring skis now, and this is kind of my big powder touring ski. This is one that I took to Georgia this winter. I went on a trip with a bunch of friends. We were actually three guides, plus a couple of friends who are like really strong season air skiers. And yeah, yeah, we had an absolute blast out there. Definitely somewhere to check out. It's really great that that place is getting some uh, media coverage from the Freeride World Tour. And yeah, this is one of the skis that I took with me. It's the Solomon QST Blank. It's a couple of seasons old, this model, uh, but it's still holding up. There's nothing wrong with it because mostly I've been skiing powder rather than hitting it off rocks. This season, like I said, I'm sponsored by ATK. So I've got the Free Raider. 15 Evo on here and the kind people at ATK even inscribed my name on them as well You might notice on here that I have this kind of extra wide plate on it Now this is a rental plate and that means that I can unscrew the binding and shift it forward um, Or backwards that's kind of handy sometimes and it's something that I would quite like to do with my other work skis is having an option that I can change people's skis around in the group that I'm working in and that means, you know, potentially, if somebody's got a boot that's a centimeter and a half wider than mine, or even two centimeters longer than mine, we might be able to move the bindings around and they could go onto my skis and then I can kind of take on the going downhill on one ski. Yeah, it's a little bit heavier. It does add a little bit of extra mass to the ski, which I do find that sometimes actually a lot of the stuff that people are skiing on is too light, especially for the conditions that we get around Chamonix. I find a little bit of extra weight on a, on a powder ski like this is actually quite nice. It means that they're not getting deflected off stuff as easily. The other benefit with this plate is it raises the toe up by four millimeters, which you can get a plastic plate that does that, which comes with the bindings, and that puts the binding at a zero degree uh, delta, which means that basically your your toe pins and your heel pins are flat. And that means that you can set the, the lean or the ramp angle internally in the boot, which is a lot easier to do. You can add cork inside underneath your heel or you can change the, the cuff angle. And it's a little bit of an easier way to get comfortable. And then if you keep that consistent throughout the bindings, so all my bindings have a four mil raise on the toe, whether it's one of these or a plastic shim that goes underneath, that means that when I'm stepping onto different skis, my boots, they kind of feel the same throughout my quiver. So the next ski down from that is my Ronin 108s that I built myself, handmade in Chamonix with Jono. This was such a fun project to work on. I really, really enjoyed building these skis. And sometimes it makes me not want to ski them because I kind of want to keep them nice for as long as possible. You know, I, I don't really want to beat them up on rocks and stuff. So I only take them out occasionally. And also what I do find with these skis is because they're a little bit longer than my other 106 that I'm going to talk about in a minute. They do hold an edge quite well, sometimes a little bit too well. I'm not sure if it's the tune. I'm not sure if it's the sintered ray space or just getting used to a different profile of ski. But sometimes I feel a little bit like they're a bit difficult to put sideways again could be me, I don't know. But it does mean that they're super fun when you've got big wide open slopes. So if you do a lot more of that, then you know, longer, kind of more traditionally cambered ski like this can be really fun. But I do find them a little bit more hard work in tight places like in the trees, for example. I do love this ski. I find that it's pretty amazingly damp for the weight of this ski. 
I'm going to play around with the tune a little bit more and see if there isn't something that can make them a little bit more consistent at coming off the edge. But yeah, generally, I try and avoid skiing these skis just to keep them nice. So the other ski that I ski a whole bunch, and you definitely will have seen me on this ski a lot during this winter, and it's really the ski that I kind of reach for when I don't really know what's going on. If there's maybe a little bit of fresh snow or I'm going for a tour, but it's basically my work ski. It's like something that I just, I know that I'm gonna have a good day on that ski, unless it's really hard conditions, and then I'll definitely take something a little bit thinner. Yep, I've been skiing on the QST Echo, which is the 106 ski from Solomon. And I got this ski at the end of last season. I put some ATK bindings on it, which I think really improved this ski because having heel elasticity in the binding really makes the ski nice and damp over kind of harder stuff. And it just means that the flex of the ski is a little bit more natural. I also have these free ride spaces on here, which is basically a way that you can move the contact point of your boot more directly onto the ski. So the weight of your foot is going directly onto these plates, which are a little bit wider. And it means that when you're driving the ski, you can drive more directly down through the boot. So it feels a little bit more like an Alpine binding because a lot of tech bindings, you're just on the pins and the pins, there is some rotation there at the heel, especially when you're kind of hitting hard stuff. Now, some people like that or some people don't mind that. But for me, I pretty much always have a binding that has a brake on it and having a brake and this free ride spacer, for me, that feels the best. One thing I love about these bindings, the newest version of the ATK, is that they're super easy to lock the brakes down. So all you do is twist the, the binding around and then you put your skin on and you put the ski down on the ground. And the nice thing there is the brake is still down and then you clip into the ski, lock the toe on, and then you stamp down, and then the brake is tucked away. And it's super easy to do. The previous system that they had had a little catch on it, so you would press the button and you'd have to press the, the brake down simultaneously. And it was a little bit of a pain, I must admit. But yeah, this way of doing it is much better. I think it's the best system that I've seen out there. So it's really easy to turn as well. A little tip for you guys if you've got these bindings is that if you, if you spread the, uh, the heel raisers out so there's one on each side, you can much more easily twist those around. And also it's super easy to flip the heel raisers over with the pole basket because they're just super easy to do. You don't have to like twist the whole binding to get a higher raise or something like that. For me, the ATK bindings have definitely been a huge step forward and yeah, I've just been super stoked with them. One thing I would say about the ATK, the release values is I tend to go up by about two than I would normally. And I don't know why that is, but I did have a couple of pre-releases when I was a little bit more on a normal DIN setting that you might have on an Alpine binding. It's not actually an official DIN value, it's a release setting. So a DIN value is really for plastic on plastic that you get with a regular downhill binding, for example. So yeah, it's definitely worth going out there and figuring out the release values a little bit. So maybe start where you normally do and then you know see if something is happening. If it is, then definitely worth just cranking it up a little bit more. I think the difference with these skis and the Ronins is that these have a little bit more of a tail rocker which means that they're just a little bit easier to throw around in a tight spot. So around Chamonix, a lot of the tours that we have, you know, classic tours at the top of my head, like Col de Passon, stuff that goes over and into the Barad Valley and out of that exit, things in Contamine when you're coming down the Roman Road, stuff like that, even the Valley Blanche, you know, you've got very tight tracks and, and turns and maneuvers and stuff. And I just find these are a little bit more consistent on that type of stuff, which is kind of quite a specific type of skiing. You know, it's not really what people are going out and to, to have fun on. You know, it's just part of what we have to deal with out in Chamonix. One thing I really wish Solomon would do is flatten this tail off and make it more uh, tail clip compatible for the skins. I just find that the skins come off a little bit too easily, especially if you have quite a long uh, strap length at the back. I would be interested to try 
other skis from this class and see if I get on with anything slightly better. But generally, I find these pretty good fun. I definitely can't open it up as much as I can with the Ronin skis. These are the 181 version. So as you can see against the floor there, it's only just a little bit taller than me. And I think they are quite a bit shorter than the Ronins because a lot of ski manufacturers are measuring their skis totally flat before they press them. So they lose quite a lot of length in them. So that's why I think my Rustler 11s came up a little bit short on me is because they're measured totally flat. And then when they put the bend in the tip and the camber, then you're losing a lot of the length there. Whereas the Ronins are a true 185. So the next ski down from that in my quiver is the Nordica Enforcer 94 Unlimited, which is was kind of supposed to be like my steep skiing and uh, you know getting out there and skiing when it's just a little bit more dense snow or you know when I want something that was a little bit lighter to go a little bit further. I've kind of got on with these skis and I kind of haven't. I feel like they've kind of gone down the road of making these quite good in powder, but I don't tend to take these skis out when it's really powdery. I'll be taking the 106. They are reasonably okay on hard snow, and I found that I actually had to do quite a lot of a detune on the tail to make them a little bit easier to kind of get off edge. But I have found that on hard snow, they do tend to get locked in a little bit. And yeah, you know, when you're landing jump turns on harder snow, I find that they're a little bit inconsistent when you're landing. So I am actually looking for something that might be a little bit better for, you know, steep couloir skiing, for example, because yeah, I've not been super impressed with these skis, but at the same time, I have also had a few pretty good days out with those as well. the ATK Raider 13 on these skis. I maybe could have got away with a slightly lighter binding on these and that might have made them felt a little bit better for kind of doing bigger missions. But yeah, these are skis that I'm using sometimes, but definitely not as much as the QST Echo 106. So before we talk about the final ski in my quiver, I just thought I'd mention the poles that I'm using. These are the Swix Sonic R2 poles and I have been really enjoying using these this season, actually. I took the straps off them. I never use straps, not for any of my, my poles. And I find that I never miss them. I've got very used to holding onto the poles. Yeah, I don't feel like I need the straps to be able to push down on. I love the basket design on these. They're basically like a fabric floating basket. They're super light. The swing weight is just absolutely spot on for me. It's got a nice flat edge on on the side for kind of scraping snow off the skis as well. Yeah, they easily go from 115 up to 140. So sometimes when you hit one of those flat tracks and you want to get your poles nice and long for giving yourself a big pole along a big flat section, it's quite nice to just be able to absentmindedly unscrew them and then pull it out all the way to 140, lock it down and you're away. And then when you put them back down to where you want them, 115 is perfect for me. So yeah, having something that goes from exactly, you know, skiing to the longest you'd ever need it without it coming apart is actually a really good little upgrade from my previous poles. And then the other pole that I have is this, this old Solomon SC1 uh, carbon pole. These are super strong. I've never managed to break these. Um, they've got a nice, kind of cork grip on them as well, which is nice. Uh, yeah, these are basically for just hacking around the resort. Occasionally I'll just grab these and sometimes I just leave them in my car as a spare set of poles. So if a client loses theirs or breaks them, then I can always go down to the car and grab them a pole if we're doing something fairly close or if they forget their poles or something. So yeah, these, uh, these are nice and solid, but that's pretty much it for poles. Keep it simple. By the way, I know that you're admiring this way that I've got it uh, clipped on there. I had a friend that 3D printed that for me. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. So the final ski in my quiver and something that I don't actually use a huge amount these days because we've been having fairly good 
consistent weekly storms or fresh top ups of snow is this guy, which is the Blizzard 0G80. Now I don't tend to go any lighter than this with a set of skis. I feel like I could pretty much do anything that I wanted to do in Chamonix that involved carrying skis up a mountain with this. I know some people love having those super thin ray skis that are like 64 underfoot and you know if you're really into that kind of stuff then that's great. That's not for me. I like having a ski that I can actually ski with downhill and I feel like this strikes a bit of a compromise between lightness and actually having something that holds an edge really well. So actually for couloir skiing when the snow's a little bit harder or steeper skiing when the snow's harder, these are awesome. I really have been enjoying these for a couple of small little missions. And I would also use these for training. Uh, they have the tip clip there so you can easily have those skins that kind of clip in at the top and you can rip them off easily. But yeah, super stoked with these skis. I would like to use them a little bit more. Maybe I'm gonna use them more in the springtime for doing some bigger missions. This binding is the Haute Route 10, which doesn't have a break and you'll notice it also doesn't have a leash. I really don't like leashes. Uh, some people do, I kind of get them. I kind of see why people would want them, but if you feel like you're gonna drop a ski, if you feel like you can't manage your skis in hard snow, then definitely just get a break. It's so much easier and it's so much better and that extra little bit of weight doesn't make that much of a difference at all. My big problem with leashes is the fact that you'll kind of have the ski attached to your boot. If you are to get caught in an avalanche, then the ski's not gonna come off completely and that could be dragging you down or holding you down in the snow and you could be more likely to get buried. That's just my personal feeling about leashes. I don't love them. I did experiment with them a little bit back in the past, but I just found that I just don't see the point personally. So yeah, as you notice, most of my skis have brakes on them and these ones, basically they don't have anything on them and I'm just happy that I can kind of manage those skis quite easily by maybe taking them on and off my foot whilst holding on to them. So if you can't do that, then I would suggest just getting brakes. So there you go, that's all the skis that I've been using this season. If you've got any thoughts or comments or suggestions of other skis that I should try, then you know, let me know. I'm always on the search for improving my gear, as you may or may not have guessed from watching my videos. Yeah, as I said, this season I don't have a ski sponsor. I kind of manufactured this season that way so I could have a little bit more flexibility to do certain things, but I am kind of interested in working with a ski company. So if you're out there and you're watching this video, hi. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to let me know that you liked that. Write something down in the comments, all that fun stuff that helps my channel to expand and grow. And that means I can do more videos and more fun things. So thanks very much. I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.